Hello everyone, this is Waldorf. And this is Statler. And today we're looking at Battle Report 65. 065. One day that zero is going to drop. <clears throat> which is going to be... It's going to be replaced by a one? It's going to be a scary day. Or, or we're going to stop, or we're <laughs> gonna retire or die before gonna retire we have a chance or die. to make it that far. we got to get to 100 before yeah. we do this. <laughs> yeah. um, trying something different. I'm going with Kingdom of Equitain now for a little while. Try that out. <laughs> there you go. So you started off with the Equitane Civil War. <laughs> we started off with the Equitane. I, a guy asked me, he said, you want to have a game tonight? I said, sure. He primarily plays Orcs or Empire. Yes. And I'm like, oh, sure. I didn't think to ask him or anything. So I showed up with Kingdom of Equitane, and he showed up with Kingdom of Equitane. It is his favorite army. I think the beauty of this is there's a battle report here with two Kingdoms of Equitane's armies, so and neither one of them is mine. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdom of Equitain seems to be getting a little bit more popular now, uh, at least locally in the. Because it looks nice in our area. <laughs> it looks nice, and I think it people are kind of figuring out a little bit how to deal with it. And with the monster meta coming up, you know, increasing. Yes. Kingdom of Equitain are one of the armies that is has answers to the monsters. Right. Right. So. And <laughs> there's not a lot of uh, vermin uh, around here. And there's not a lot of vermin around and here. There's not a lot this of uh, army would undead not around do here. Well. <laughs> right. So, uh, and there's not a lot of uh, highborn elves. <laughs> the, um, I don't see highborn elves as a major issue for them. Yeah. I think you're fast enough to get on them. Yeah, the challenge is getting overcoming their initiative before they chop you up. Overcoming the swordmaster initiative. <laughs> yes. There is that. <laughs> yes. Um, at least they won't be very deep because <laughs> they're not going to want to cinch up with the two uh, trebuchets <laughs> dropping on them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have that going for you at least. <laughs> anyway, Kingdom of Aquitaine versus uh, Kingdom of Aquitaine. Unfortunately, no, the, the Nightlands won't be very deep after either after the first round of combat. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. It is a good point. <laughs> yeah. So, Yes. Uh, here's my Kingdom of Equitaine list. This is a very Germanic looking font. It is. I run German knights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of stole from the Empire. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to fix that in the next battle report. Alright. <laughs> you can find me a better font then. Perry Gothic. So went with <laughs> went with the Duke, the general who has the mace of Tristan. Tristan, Tristan, Tristan. So, so he can break stuff. So he can break stuff. And to help him break stuff, the potion of swiftness. Okay. He's got the virtue of audacity, so if I... I believe it's pronounced virtue of audacity. <laughs> <laughs> if he runs against something tough or strong, he at least will be uh, stubborn. and give the unit stubborn, he can reroll hits and... Uh, wounds. Yes, misses and failed to wounds. And he, and he has a helm. And he's got a helm for a rerollable one-up <laughs> armor, and is five-up armor behind that. Mm -hmm. So. And five-up armor behind that? Five-up ward behind that. <laughs> the... um, so I kind of like him. Uh, we'll see how he does. The Mace of Tristane is kind of a, you know, new thing for me. We'll see how it. See how I like. Yeah, that. it's a bit of a defensive weapon. It is, um, but if I can bop some guy with that, I'd love to take away that ogre's, you know, D three wound weapon. Yeah, you run before up, he starts pounding. Do run into a lot of ogres around here. You're right, ogres <laughs> are popular. Yeah. Um, of course. The virtue of audacity does absolutely no good in the game I played. Yes. Um, actually, te technically, I guess it did later in the game. Um, then the next one is I've got another Duke, both on all on horse, no nothing flying. I think the flyers right now are still too vulnerable. Um, the Duke with the uh, dragon lance, dragon scale helm, the dusk stone, virtue of might, war horse. So this is the D3. This is the guy that multiplies his this wounds in the D3. Mr. Charge. charge. Captain Charge. Captain Charge. <laughs> yes. So we'll see how, again, um, the multiple wounds thing is kind of wasted when I was playing Kingdom of Equitain. <laughs> the... um, but it's what it is. Uh, Paladin BSB with the hardened shield on a war horse. It gives him the one-up save followed by his ward save. Um, which is good. You know, I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy, the other duke, nice <clears throat> has a one-up armor. It's nice with a great weapon. The other duke has a one-up armor, and then he has the choice to take a rerollable armor or take the ward. Right. Because of the dusk stone. Right. Um, yeah, I like the great weapon, but then that would mean a um, questing virtue. Yes. For him. Yeah, then have the points. 
and I didn't have the points for it. And also, what does that do for? Doesn't that require him to be in a questing unit, or can he be no, in any unit? No, he be in okay. a unit. It yeah. just um, gives you multi wound, and it gives you. Uh, you can get to use your shield in combat. So. Oh, I'll have to look at that. See if I yeah. can squeeze it in. If you're going to take the hardened shield, I mean. That's true. It seems to be a good way to go. Um. Because then you don't lose much because you're already. In, your initiative's going down a lot, so you're going after a lot of things anyway, so there's no, no big true. harm. Right. I mean, if you're not going to do that with the, the general. Okay, I have to consider that one. Mm -hmm. The damsel with the, with the, is a wizard master with uh, three extra learned spells for a total of four. Yeah, which I ran with with um, druidism in this one to druidism. test it. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. I still like shamanism a lot. Because that base spell is just so good. Um, yeah, I'm a big shamanism fan. But grazing, I mean, raising up uh, dead knights is also a... Raising is nice. It's just nice those, those casting values are quite high. Uh, what do we got? 11 knights of the realm with full command and a war banner. 9 knights of the realm with full command. Unit of 5 knights of the realm with a musician and champ. No banner. And 5 knights aspirant. Um, you know, these are, those two little units are mainly probably chaff clearers. That's, you know, and, and bait to get somebody to come hit them and draw mm -hmm. them out for the other units to hit. And you probably have to explain to people why you bother with the five knights of the realm. I like the five knights of the realm because I can sneak a guy in it. As opposed to five knights aspirant. Yeah, you can't put a duke, you can't put the duke in with the five knights aspirant. You put him in, you just don't get the bonus. Correct. You can use the bonus yeah. for doing it. So I put him in that way I can slip one I can slip mm -hmm. the guy with the dragon lance into those five knights of the realm. Gives him a little bit of protection on the first round or two. Mm -hmm. And then he can charge out or charge with the unit. Mm -hmm. Then it's worth a banner. What's that? So then it's worth a banner. Uh it's another twenty points. I gotta come yeah. up with some place. Yeah, yeah. And that's this isn't an arm this isn't an easy army to get twenty points. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean looking down that list, you know, where do you where do you find twenty points in there? Yep. Um, because the aspirants are the exact same price as the Knights of the Realm, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So no, the first um, five or I can't remember. Twenty and, points different. No, I'll have to look at that. I think they're the same, but I'll look. Uh three Pegasus Peg Knights with skirmish. There's a, I could guess I could drop the skirmish. I like being minus one to be shot at, though. <laughs> it is nice. Um, five peasant, yo, five yeoman outriders, chaff, and two trebuchets. Tray buckets. I think you need to say great trebuchet. Great trebuchet? Because when we see your models. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've still got to work on the basing for that. <laughs> yeah, they don't sell a pizza pie size they don't. Well, I figure I can take the, get those next time we go out and get a, grab a pizza yeah, and I'll bring yeah, one home. Ask them for one of, their, one of their dishes. Yeah, you can put underneath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and this is the guy I'm playing. You may remember him from a few battle reports back because we've done a few battle reports with him. He has his list. <laughs> yes. This is the cover of his list. <laughs> and here's his list. He has a duke. Uh, Virtue of Might, Crusader Helm, Dragon Lance looks a lot like mine. You seem to make some last minute changes. He was making all these notes. <laughs> Actually, these notes, <laughs> the notes you see here are from the last time he played this game and we kind of watched the tail end of the game. Uh -huh. And he sat with us and asked us for, uh, yes, yes. for suggestions. <laughs> so he wrote all these suggestions down and then didn't implement them. And then he didn't them. implement them. Ah, oh, there you go. So, um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, BSB with Dragon Scale. Oh, sorry, not with the Dragon Scale helm. He wrote that, didn't take it. <laughs> yeah. Hero Sword. Uh, anyway, uh, level. Here's the one of the big problems that we pointed out to him: the level one damsel with a dispel scroll. Yeah, it's like almost useless to have a you have level one. Yes, because you're not ever going to cast that spell. Right. Because your opponent's got it's however many it. dice. Yep. Yeah. I guess you have a chance of casting if you roll like a two and a one. Yeah. For a magic dice. And you basically, if you don't have anything else, you might as well use those points for a, mm -hmm. a fighting character. Yeah. I mean, she came up at 250. Yeah. We got 100 of that is the Dispel Scroll, I guess. But Yeah. Um. Then we have Paladin. 
part of Warhorse, Razor Blade, Grail of O. Okay? Paladin to go in with the Grail Knights. Pike along with them. Mm -hmm. I'm liking Paladin. I mean, everyone who wants to go Duke Heavy, I'm liking Paladins more and more just because the point... The point the, difference? The points are such a challenge for this army. Just finding points and places is so, is so important. Yeah, I don't want to drop the guy with the audacity down to a paladin. Yeah. And I don't... I'm sorry, the, the guy with the virtual bite down to a paladin. I don't want to lose an attack on him. Yeah, it doesn't bother me too much because of the rerolls. You're not rerolling to hit, though. Yeah, it's fine. So that means on, on average you're getting one and a half hits, maybe? Mm. Anyway. Anyway, so uh, six knights aspirant. Uh, another eight knights of the then eight knights of the realm, another unit of five knights of the realm. Nothing special there. Thirty peasant levy with light armor, spear, and shield, full command. Twenty peasant bowmen, light armor, long bows. Musician standard bear. What's that? Oh, musician standard. Yeah. Twenty-four more peasants, crusaders this time with shield, light armor, and shields. Uh, yeoman Outriders, Reliquary, and a War Machine, a Trebuchet, with four crew. Isn't that like standard? Anyway, Trebuchet. <laughs> yes, it is. It's Strength 4, Armor Piercing. We missed it. Yeah. Anyway, you'll see during the report, forgot the Armor Piercing. Ah. Uh. I did. <laughs> <laughs> when firing mine. It does make a difference. It does. Um, plus five Knights of the Grail. Full command. That's where the one guy's going. And he put his, of course, put the artillery rules and okay. stuff in Did there. you both, both take the... Uh, Oops. We the both chose... Favor, the, favor of the King, the five... Both, yes, the five up versus strength five or better. Okay. The, the ward save versus strength five or better. Yeah. We did not take the armor piercing. Um, my spells up here on the top. Or Master of Earth, Healing Waters, Stone Skin, and Summer Growth. And Open Thrones, the uh, trait spell. Open so, yeah. And Fountain of Youth is the uh, attribute. attribute. So this is one of the spells that's got a trait and an attribute, which is mm -hmm. kind of nice. Um, yeah, the mass, the Stone Skin's nice. Um, I, like, I like these spells. Healing Waters doesn't do much for you in this one because they're the uh, five up regen save. Yeah, I mean, it's it's okay because you can toss it on a unit that's fighting something with low strength. Correct. Um, but anyway, a few of my models there. Those are my characters lined up there in front. And moving on, a couple more models. Even my other unit. <laughs> and small unit. All right. So this was the board. Since we're both playing night armies, we figured two forest, a water feature, a wall <laughs> were in good order. Why, why don't you have a couple fields? Uh, we should have had a couple fields. We should have had a couple well. fields. Should have yeah. been like one right here in the yeah. center, a large one, two. maybe another one over yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. I've been perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, large building and a pair of hills. So that's where we have it. Let's see, moving on to his left flank, we have his yeoman, his yeoman, and then the bowman. He didn't bother deploying his, his wall because he plans on moving it, moving okay. him immediately. So, All right. um, this is his knights. These are both uh, knights of the realm. All right. Unless one of these was pirates. Um, anyway, big, huge peasant levy that's, unit. That's not huge. Well, and it's not big either. Huge to me. Anything uh, over one is huge to me. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe in peasants. Go, um, go at least 40 or go home. <laughs> <laughs> These were the Knights Aspirant, by the way. Yeah. As, right here. Okay. Aspirant. Uh, the Reliquary here. Mm -hmm. And Grail Knights here. And his trebuchet. In the corner. With the little guy with the horse hanging out. It's not actually a model. It's just kind of a... It's not a unit. It's just a guy hanging out with the, it's just with the for trebuchet. Aesthetic purposes. Aesthetic purposes. Um, there's a better picture. And his damsel hanging out here behind the building. On foot. 
on foot, making sure she doesn't get pegged by a trebuchet. Mm -hmm. And that wagon just... And the wagons and other... There for aesthetics. aesthetics. On my right flank, I found out I had left my yeoman at home. So you showed up with a so, horde of horses? So I showed up with five horses, <laughs> which would be better than mounted yeoman, actually, I think. <laughs> the... no. um, so five mounted yeoman. This is a unit of five uh, knights of the realm with the uh, virtue of might guy right here in the right. front corner. My three peg knights. And my trebuchets. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get them on <laughs> 75, did, 75 did millimeters. Did you reinforce the table with some concrete blocks? To hold <laughs> these, things, these things are light, yeah. extremely light. They're made of balsa wood. Because they're made out of wood. <laughs> they're made out of balsa like wood. Like real trebuchets. They are. They are yeah. actually made out of wood. <laughs> yeah. Um, five knights, aspirant, and two units of knights of the realm. There right here is my general with the virtue of audacity mm -hmm. and my bsb right here in the front corner okay. of this unit and of course my damsel hanging out back here hmm. why is that not sure okay <laughs> um i wanted the flexibility of not putting her in a unit and right now i'm fairly safe he, i'm out of the range of his trebuchet i think either out of his range or out of sight of his trebuchet because of this building mm -hmm. um and his archers are behind the hill so I'm not worried yet. This gives me the option of where I want to send her. I would like to keep her completely out of the unit, if I could, for uh, shooting purposes. I mean, so that way when I miscast, it doesn't take any... Yeah, when you're rolling your 3d6 and 4d6 to get these spells off. Right. It's not taking anybody with me. Yeah. Anyway, there's my thought on that one. So, Vanguard moved up. He moves up over here on the left. And that's where we go. Uh, I had first turn. So you move forward at a blur? And moving fast. <laughs> yeah. I had first turn on the right-hand side, just moved up with everything on the right. Mm -hmm. The the uh, Peg Knight stayed back to make sure these guys don't have an escape down this way. I'm real concerned about them. And my Knights of the Realm came up just a bit. Got in position over here to watch for whatever's coming around the corner. And my yeoman marched down to here. Um, so I'm out of arc of here. I guess I'm still in arc here. We discussed this. Yes, you I were. I think they can turn and go at me. Mm -hmm. um, he chose not to. Which I guess wouldn't have been the end of the world if he did. Because that would have put this unit all the way in the corner right. of the board. Right, it had been out of the game. Yes. So... Uh, turn one, my trebuchet fires and takes off 20 archers. Okay. We didn't panic. And he stuck around. He didn't feel like leaving. This one's illegally deployed. It's hanging off the table. This is more <laughs> than 75 millimeters. What I've been playing is I've been playing everything in this square is the, is the I'm, base. I'm just saying, you go for the thing, it needs to be on the table. <laughs> anyway. Second trebuchet fires. Next thing you'll be vanguarding with these with these things. <laughs> All right, now it's enough of that. Uh, only kills about seven of these guys. What's that? Ten, twenty. Yeah, that's more than seven. You start with twenty-five. Maybe it costs twelve. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it killed twelve. Yeah, because it looks like he's yes. got eighteen left. <laughs> yes, it looks like he killed twelve. No, he didn't start with thirty, did he? Maybe he did. Okay. Oh, he said, uh, I thought they were twenty-five and. Because there's 18 left right now. Okay, yeah. So Actually, he did. He had one unit of 30. That's the unit yeah. of 30. So it killed 12. Um, so there you have it. That's what it looks like moving into his turn. Some lazy bum just hanging out there on the right-hand side, gawking. <laughs> they, it's the problem with spectators. Sometimes they don't bother. They just lean on your board, get in your way. They have to make sure you don't vanguard your trebuchets. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure I don't vanguard my trebuchets, yes. <laughs> Um, so, moving on to his turn, he elected to come up and just chaff me up with his yeoman. Um, still quite a bit of distance away. Um, he's kind of doing the one of my chaff moves, where you chaff a guy way too early. Um, other than that, the archers came up, and I guess he's using them as chaff as well. It would seem so. Because that's <laughs> the purpose they're serving at that point. 
Yeah. Moved his Grail Knights up here on the far right. I'm not real sure what he's planning with them. And I didn't ask him, but I'm not sure why they're taking the tour of the board. Yeah, they're they're fast, but they're not that fast. And right. all your stuff's on the other flank. And so All my stuff's over there except for this one unit. Yeah. And the asp aspirants come up to here. It gives me an easy charge into them. Um, but when I look at this, if I go easy charge into them, even if I blow through them, if I don't roll like an 11 or 12 on the overrun, these guys are in my flank. Yep. If I hit them and stick, these guys are in my front and going to charge me, and I'm going to be there forever. So either way, I don't think this is a bad move. For that unit. Um, there you go. It's the left hand side. You can see down there. So he fires his trebuchet and clicks off a peg knight. But we did pass our test and stuck around. Even though one of them got squished by a big huge rock falling from the sky. <laughs> so there we have it going into turn two. So my knights, knights of the realm, decide. Hmm, forget this. I'm going to hit them in the side, and because I did the math, hit them in the side. If I can kill, what was it, like seven or eight? Actually, I don't even need to kill that. If I kill, I think it's only four. He's no longer steadfast. I've got, as long as he doesn't kill one of me. <laughs> yes. He's no longer steadfast. I can overrun into this unit, which will put me out of arc of the knights. Right. So that's my plan there. The Peg Knights decide to charge into the rear of this unit of Mounted Yeoman because mm -hmm. I just didn't want to get this unit too close to this big unit he's got over here. Right. It's all about who charges who in, yeah. in an Equitain Civil War. Absolutely. And up here on the top, my Knights charged here. Based on the arc here, the center of my unit's going to be about here, way out of arc, so when I kill them and reform, I can reform facing out this way out of arc without putting myself in danger, mm -hmm. which I like. So these guys needed to roll a six <laughs> they... to make it in, and you can see my roll. There's a six on the blue die. There is. That was an example of what I needed. <laughs> yes. They rolled a two, two, and a one. That's not good. Not at all. Yeah, I didn't want to fight those guys anyway. I didn't want didn't want this unit this knight's <laughs> aspirant up there charging me either. <laughs> aspirant. Uh, start shooting. My trebuchet misfires. rolls a misfire, takes a wound. Another trebuchet fire. Look at the size of that thing. It's pretty <laughs> awesome, isn't it? It is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this trebuchet fires. Uh, kills five more spearmen. He made uh, five armor saves, which he shouldn't have had when I thought about it, because it's strength four armor piercing. Yes. And there are only five ups. But as it was, he made five out of ten armor saves. Yeah. Considering I didn't bring the armor piercing version of mine. <laughs> that's the penalty for deploying him off the board, I guess. I guess that's what it is, yes. Um, anyway, down here, my yeoman wipe out his trebuchet. And this night... <laughs> Unit of Knights charge of the unit of Bowman. I kill eight of the ten. He yep. kills two of my guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Bowman? Anyway. Two up's great till you roll a one. It is. <laughs> it is. Um, but you got just an equal chance of rolling a six as you do a one, so shouldn't they have rallied and saved one of them? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the Peg Knights came in, killed a few of the uh, yeomen. May, may, not, may or may not have been all of them. And then overran to here, where you see. So now if he declares a charge at me, I'm just going to flee. And that's the overall situation going into the bottom of second turn. There you go. And the aspirants decide to come in and make it easily. I don't think they could have failed that one. <laughs> I don't think that was possible. The peasants march up to the center of the board. 
and the Grail Knights come around the edge of the woods. And the um, Reliquary so, and the reliquary Crusaders come around the corner of this. Come around the corner of this, and then the Knights of the Realm move forward. just move forward, heading towards the trebuchets. <laughs> they have angered him. Yeah. <laughs> the, the yelling of the peasants has angered them. <laughs> yes. There's a good shot of his uh, relic, decent shot of his reliquary, with his mage leading the way with the big stick. There you go. So. Oh, yeah, this was funny. On the, on the right hand side, he charged me. My general, I'm not my general, my duke is in this with the virtue of might, which does you know pretty much nothing for me in this situation but i managed to sneak i think two wounds through with him which reduced his attacks down to eight instead of twelve i'm sorry six instead of eight ten anyway i killed one or two with him he completely whiffed between his missing and my saving he did not a single wound to me i killed one or two more in my other attacks yep did a total of three wounds. He broke, and I ran him down and <laughs> caught him. Yep. Was, this ended the game for him right here. <laughs> his personal morale was broken. His personal morale was completely broken after this after this combat, and it was just a pure luck. I could I knew I, I thought I was dead for sure. I didn't think I had any chance of surviving that. Yeah, neither did I. <laughs> um, but that's why you roll the dice. But again, <laughs> that's why you roll the dice. So. This leads me, unfortunately, I had a very short overrun. I mean, it wasn't a great overrun, as you can see. Didn't go very far. Um, a pursuit move, sorry, not an overrun. But it was enough to catch him. So, overall, we're looking like that going into turn three. There we go. So, these guys decide they're invincible. They're going to charge into the big unit. They need a 14 to get there. It's a lot easier when you charge them in the flank. It is. <laughs> the, let's see if I've got a better picture of that. There you go. This unit up top, which you can hardly see, is charging into the spearmen. This unit of knights is going to come forward, wheel, and smash into the flank of the knights of the realm here. And as luck would have it, all three charges make it. Lost a knight in the swamp? I lost... No, there was two hanging out in the back. Oh, okay. Uh, two more. characters. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not lose any. I had to take four. I think it was four dangerous terrain checks, yeah. and they all passed. Elsewhere, the, you can see the peg knights have come up. Yep. The support up here. Um, these guys are coming here because in exactly what I was thinking might happen. If I don't kill enough of these, he's going to turn to face me, which is going to put him on the hill, which is going to let me see him. Because right now I can't see him with the right. as- aspirants. Uh, over here, <laughs> the mounted yeoman have uh, returned to the field. And they plinked off that little gesture you see in the back of this unit. <laughs> don't know how they do it just with horses, but they did. Spit. That horse spit's horse really spit. nasty. So I charged into the flank of this unit, and he managed to kill two. Uh, <laughs> these guys are actually fragile. That's what I'm learning. <clears throat> they, I mean, come on. He's got two strength four and two strength three attacks and kills two of me. <laughs> yeah. Needing fours to hit. Anyway. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, over here we charged in. Oh, over here we get the stone skin off on this unit not that they desperately need it but he still manages to kill one of them but as you can see i've killed i think three of him yep. like he had one in the back so i killed three of him with the charge flank um when the combat he survives and turns to face there we go elsewhere the big unit knights of the realm sent those guys packing. I elected not to pursue them. Right. I let them go because I didn't want to catch them out here in front of the crusaders. <laughs> Instead of the crusaders, and knowing the way they were going to run away, it was going to serve as just my chaff for the crusaders. Keep them off everything, which worked out really well because now they can't even get into the back of my knights of the realm up top. 
Um, down here on the bottom, we've managed to kill all but one of the Knights of the Realm. He breaks, flees. We elected, again, not to charge him. Didn't want to get within range of the Grail Knights. Yep. There he is with fleeing. Oh, so moving on to his turn, the Grail Knights continue moving around the woods, and now they're back down here. This guy did not make his rally check and continues to run. The, these peasants failed to uh, rally again, ran through the reliquary, didn't do anything to them, and end up there. Reliquary unit moves up in the center of the board. But anyway, I'm not sure what they're doing there, but... He's just know, trying at this point. Just to, Yeah, at this get point, him fighting. desperate and wanted to get them fighting. So there you have it. Fight's gone on up top. I think this is after the fight. No one did anything to each other. It's just like almost a complete whiff. He won the combat, but I stuck around. I've got toughness six going for me with my unit up there on the top, but we just can't get, you know, strength four, strength three. It's hard Tub, for me toughness to Toughness five, right? What's that? I'm sorry, toughness five. Yeah. Um, it's just hard to get wounds through unless you're fighting archers. Um, so there you have it. Moving back into my turn four. <laughs> so the mounted yeoman, all five of them, declare the charge at these guys, at the fleeing peasants, uh, peasants. The fleeing peasants. So they have, they're forced to flee. They flee to here. I roll, roll enough to catch them, get to the edge of the woods, roll my two dangerous terrain checks. Two of them fail. And now they turn around and flee, letting his peasants escape. <laughs> so, pretty interesting. What's funnier, though, is later in this turn, because this was during the charge phase, of course. Right. Later in this turn, the rally phase comes, and the peasant yeoman have a chance to rally the same turn yeah, they break. Because it's after the uh, Correct. charge, yes. Correct. It's just kind of odd. Anomaly in the rules. It is. <laughs> yeah. uh, both my units of knights charged into the reliquary. I'm just trying to eliminate this. And you can see the peg knights have gone into the flank. The aspirants have come into the rear of this unit. Knights of the realm. And Yeah, when he was reformed, he was supposed to go wider. <laughs> to keep off the hill. Yeah. Yes, that would have made sense. Um. Yeah, I don't know why he's got that guy way back there. I don't know that it would have made much. It would have been one turn difference, I think. Because the Peg Knights would have come into the side and the other guys yes. would have come up to the hill. Um, anyway, so the Reliquary, as speaking of Shriek 3 attacks. Actually, if I remember correctly, your characters were in a challenge also, right? Yes, my character and his... They're, you were like plinking off of each other. Yeah, and not, not hurting each other at yeah. all. This is his general and my general. My, yeah. his, my um, sorry, my duke. My general's down here in this unit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they're just they're fighting each other, just chipping away. I mean, <laughs> clanging away on yeah. each other. No chipping going on. Yeah. So remember what I said about how hard it is to push wounds through with low strength. Well, he manages to kill the rock where he unit managed to kill two more of my knights. Yeah. My knights seem to be very vulnerable to slow strength. These guys are invulnerable to a charging aspirant unit but <laughs> these I, I'm losing knights left and right to strength three to the decks yeah um trebuchet this time fires and plinks off a grail knight uh the other one I don't know if you can see it yeah the other one took a wound I believe yeah there's a wound on the other one up top yes so it just fired and took a wound up on top, we've eliminated. We eliminated this unit completely. He ran, well, we didn't eliminate it. We did a lot of wounds to it. He ran, right? Ran. I had two units with a single rank. I forced him to flee from this one. They ran. We all we pursued to here. Um, <laughs> two two lances charging into a reliquary only did eight eight wound, nine wounds. With a character I or two two characters in there. <laughs> Only did nine wounds. He's got the five up ward save going for it. He has toughness three. <laughs> it is a little bit much to ask, I know. Um, 
I wasn't, I mean, it was going to be stubborn eight no matter how many I killed. But I kind of figured I would have done a little more than this. Right. So, and my... Well, gen- you did put some attacks into the... Uh... The general put his attacks into the reliquary. And didn't do anything. Um, no, he did not. Yeah. Which, anyway, re-rolling to hit and to wound. But he made, I think he just got lucky on his saves against mm-hmm. him. And overall, making his five up ward saves. <laughs> yep. Um, so we have that. Lots of dead guys there. That's going into the, now we're into the bottom of the fourth turn. Both these units fail to rally. <laughs> They're just continuing to run. Both of them, both of them are rolling at half. Right. Leadership. So I mean, leadership four and you leadership like three. Yeah. So not a big chance of them turning around. The Grail Knights elected not to make the. I think it was a seventeen-inch charge. They just moved up to get within here. They stayed back enough so that they can come in. I can't. He started. So he didn't want to come all the way up to me because I could take a four-inch move and maybe get out of this part. part. Know, with, the, with the size of that base, I don't know if he could. But I don't think I can ever move. I, can, <laughs> yeah. I need a 12-inch move to get <laughs> yeah, out I think of so. this big. Um, <laughs> so anyway, he came up here so he can make sure to wheel and line him up right. for the next one. Can the trebuchet even move now? That's a war machine. It didn't used to be able to. Yeah. I mean, if I was smart, I would have just moved it, forgot shooting it, and just move it four inches towards him so he's got a longer overrun to the other one. Or just uh, move it farther off the table. <laughs> <laughs> or I could move it further off the table, yes. You know. That is correct. So there you have that. And based on that, we quit. <laughs> <laughs> he was done. Um, the reliquary wasn't long for the world. Yes, the Grail Knights, the Grail Knights tra- killed the two trebuchets killed and the went two home. killed the trebuchets and rode off <laughs> yeah. happily ever after. Yes. My uh, yeoman did manage to rally, <laughs> giving him points for just the two trebuchets. <laughs> so he wanted to point out that, my opponent wanted to point out that he was playing with his head up his ass this whole game. Yes. <laughs> That's what he asked for that quote to be made. He, he did ask for that quote to be made. So It has been made. Anyway, this is my first try with the uh, King of Equitain. We'll see how it goes. This in, was... in, in a while. Uh, yeah, it is. Not Sorry. Your, not, not your first ever. Correct. <laughs> this is my first nine point. Actually, this might be my first ninth age game with Kingdom of Equitain. Is it? I'm trying to think if I've ever played them in ninth age. I may have played them early. You on. played them early. You played, I played them, them early um, on before last one. year. Yeah. Yeah, before, before version one, one came yeah. out. So my first game with Kingdom of Equitain after version one. So um, a couple pictures of his units. Didn't get a lot of them. We were busy packing up at that point. Yep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like I said, first game with the Kingdom of Equitain. I'm, I like. I'm, I'm, I love the Kingdom of Equitain. It's my second favorite army. So we'll see. I'll probably play a few games with this. I'm probably going to the Memorial Day Mayhem Team Tournament, and this is the army I'm considering taking to that. I need to get some mini practice games in and with it and we'll see how that goes i can always fall back on orcs yeah right you always got that <laughs> yeah. not sure if that's a good thing but yeah. i've always got orcs. no equitains uh is is good in a in team tournaments where you can somewhat control your opponents you know you can stay away from some of the armies that are just it'll sweep you off the table and then some of the others, you can just stay away from. If you have to match up against them, you just stay away from them on the table. <laughs> stay away from, oh, yes. I can, you can go against dwarves and just form line just sit in the back of the table. <laughs> right, let his war machines plink off one every turn. Yeah, and then grab some objectives at the end. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Yeah, not um, a fun game, but, I mean... It's not a fun game, but it's what you do in a... What's what you do when you face those types of opponents? Is the, it? the opponents you can't win with. Yeah. And that's one of them. Mm-hmm. So anyway, there's my first uh, Kingdom of Equitain battle report. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you at some time other or whatever. <laughs> Until we, on the next battle report, I hope. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Until the next time. <laughs>